this is really exciting for me, seriously. Uh, you might have seen some other interviews with Backspindle Games I've done, you know how much I like the guys, but they've always done very simple, and not just simple to play, but also simple to produce games, sort of. Now they are leveling up. This is a mega pre-pre-preview of a game that's hopefully going to come out in Kickstarter in January 2018. I really hope it does, because this is leveling up for Backspindle Games at so many levels, from the gameplay, complexity to the production complexity and there's some beautiful, seriously beautiful minis that I can already see around my table. Uh, Davies, why are you going to do something as complex as this when you are already so good at doing something a lot simpler? Why the extra level of complication? Um, well, I'll be honest, I, I don't think it's really very complicated. I think it's pretty simple mechanics. Um, what I do think is we hadn't done a miniatures game before mm -hmm. and a couple of years ago we met a an author, an Irish author, at a local gaming convention in Ireland who had done a prototype of a game based on his books mm -hmm. and we looked at the prototype and went yes it's <laughs> not really a game to sell but the theme and the book and the characters, the Irish, you know, the Banshee, the Changeling, the Dullahan, you know, the idea of these Curlahans, these Leprechauns. Uh, we thought, you know what, there's a really good game in there, mm -hmm. but it needs to be fun and family. Uh, hence, we came up with an idea of a cooperative game, mm -hmm. because basically in the first book, he's now written two books, in the first book it's pretty much Jack, this little boy Jack loses his father at sea and decides to go off into the magical kingdom of the Morns to try and use the magic of the dandelion to grant wishes so he can bring his dad home safe. Mm -hmm. Little does he know that the Morns is a really magical place okay. and very shortly in the book he gets caught up with all these magical characters and beasts and all sorts of fantastic things happen to him. He finds the tree within a tree, you know, the story is just packed with theme and you know, the author's actually created these characters himself. So it's a little bit, you know, Terry Pratchett-esque, but not as funny, okay. more teen book. And um, we thought, do you know what? We're gonna play about with all of this stuff and see if we can come up with a really nice cooperative game. And so far, the feedback for this game has been really positive. Okay, very, very quickly, because I know you, you mentioned that this is a fairly complex game. But very quickly, tell me how does it play and what does it do differently? Um, well, what it does is it has a little bit of resource gathering mm -hmm. and it has a little bit of fighting. Okay. It has a little bit of character development and it has a little bit of monster, you know, special abilities. So you have a little bit of that and you also have, you know, these, uh, you know, various special magic cards that come out that can, you know, hinder or help as the game plays. But I suppose a little bit like Castle Planet. If you don't work together in this game, you have a moon counter in the middle and the moon counter moves around as players take their turn. The uh, the nightmares discs will turn after every player's turn and the moon will move. So, you know, there's no, it's a dice driven thing. And these are random in terms of the dice. So it could be that this one could move five spaces in one round, mm -hmm. and this one may not move at all. But once this is either locked out or released, the rollover from the dice means that these will move maybe faster. Mm -hmm. So the game starts to move faster. So at one point you may think, yeah, we're on, we've got him under control, we've got him under control, but oh no, he's, he's speeded up. Oh no, he's going to speed it up as well. So forget about him, we gotta go to him, we gotta do that one. So it's very much like that. If you don't keep on top with that and say, well, like, Paco, you go and do that one and I'll do this one. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, these guys can come out and when they come out to fight you, their special abilities come into play. And then it's like, oh my God, we're going to die. <laughs> so it, it has that. At the end of the game, in terms of, you've already used these various cards to build up your abilities. So it gives you a dice roll plus your abilities. At the end of the game, you've got to fight the Shimnivore or the War Dog in the middle, mm -hmm. and he's trying to break through these eight sections of what was the Morn Wall. And at each time, he tries to attack two of these sections. So you can move on to one of these sections and fight him, or take the hit, let's say. Mm -hmm. 
that means you defend the wall. Okay. If the wall doesn't go, that's good. If you die, the game ends anyway. Okay. So you can't just take the hit and die. You've got to take the hit and then go and heal. But if you're going to heal, that leaves another wall section free. And you're like, damn, he's going to hit that bit now. <laughs> so it's quite powerful in terms of, you know, he is a mega beast. He is controlling all these guys. And if they get out and fight you, they are going to have a good slap. You know, they are going to give you a bit of a slap around the head and say, we're quite important here. Generally, they're actually nice beasts, mm -hmm. but because they're under his control. So if you can release them before they get out, you get a reward, a reroll, a reroll coin, which is good when you have to fight him at the end, because he is really powerful. And really, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Once this goes round, once the moon counter, it goes round second time you roll two compass dice, so it moves faster. Uh, each of the moon cycles is red for hard moon, different levels to fight these bad guys, medium and easy. And obviously a blue moon is once in a blue moon you get, they're all at minus one, mm -hmm. so that's kind of nice. You get a chance of maybe, if you get that to stop there and he's on that, it's once you have a good chance against him, but only once one player. Uh, what level of development is the game in? Is it actually in terms of uh, rules and mechanisms, is it finished and, and ready to be played? Um, the game is ready to be played. The rules are being polished in terms of how they're written. Um, I was actually writing them in the airport as we were coming across. <laughs> so yeah, the game is, is, we can play it, we can demo of it. We've, we've played it in Gen Con with some people. Um, so people have played it, a lot of play testing has gone on. And we got to polish the rules a little bit. The cards and the artwork is all finished. The dice will obviously be proper dice. These are just our little version of dice. Mm -hmm. This is all a punched version. The board may be slightly bigger. Yeah, I mean, we, we need to make very clear that this is a pre pre prototype and is nowhere near the, the, what, what the final product is, is going to be because, well, it's going to go through Kickstarter, which hopefully will break. 15 or 20 stretch goals, something in those lines, fingers crossed. But I have to say, what already looks absolutely spectacular, spectacular, are the minis. I mean, the sculpting is absolutely beautiful. The 3D printing has been done very, very well, and every single character is really full of that character. How do you guys go about designing them? Um, okay, locally in Ireland, we had two gentlemen who had done some artwork for the original book. Okay. They had done... a. Uh, similar to a bestiary, um, based on the characters in the book. There's a lot of interest in Ireland in the Mourns and mm -hmm. Irish mythology and that sort of thing. So we went to them and approached them. And the guy John, who's John Farrelly, is a very, very talented artist. He actually runs uh, comics called Captain something. Oh, <laughs> what is it? Captain something cartoons. Okay. What is Captain cartoons? John Farrelly. You can't remember? Oh, I apologize, we'll, find, we'll find out for you, don't worry. So John is very, very good. He, he, he does cartoons, he does a, a magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and he did the characters and toed and fro between us and the, uh, the uh, author. Mm -hmm. So we got the characters that would work in terms of characters and as minis. Mm -hmm. And then we worked with Ninja Division to uh, make sure the 3D side of things are good in terms of we don't want them breaking off or being too fragile. So obviously three Ninja Division and Soda Pop Miniatures have done a lot of really cool minis. So they did that and then we got um, Wordforge to do some 3D resin minis just for, for speed. So yeah, because they give them the size and the, the quality of them and everything, they're, they're very good quality as you can see. Yes. Um, we think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And you are right. I mean, stretch goals, we have a couple of extra characters and, and nightmare minis that we have got planned. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see them come to life. Um, there are no leprechauns in this game. Okay. So there may be a leprechaun as a stretch goal. Okay. These are curly hands, uh -huh. you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's stuff like that and Hopefully people will like it and want to play it and not all die horribly. <laughs> as, as they should. Well, great, people, now you know, uh, wait until January. Don't spend all your Christmas money because you're going to need it for this Kickstarter because I get the feeling by the time you finish designing this, this is going to be spectacular, seriously spectacular. So I'm, I'm 
I'm so impressed with this. I'm loving, I'm loving the mini. So best of luck with the Kickstarter, David. I really hope it will, it will be amazingly. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I appreciate it.